Welcome back, baseball fans, to the 1972-75 Carryover League. We have fourth round draft results. Fourth round is one of the best rounds I enjoy because I know which year the team will be drafting in. As the first four rounds of the draft, you take a player from each of the four years of the league this year at 72 to 75. Then the fifth round, everybody takes a card from the fourth year out, the biggest talent pool, which is 75 in this case. And then it goes backwards, sixth round, 74, seventh round, 73. Eighth round, 72, because um, it's the smallest talent pool, but it's also your eighth round pick. So even if you get an undesirable player, it's only a one-year contract. It's like a Band-Aid, and then you can replace him next year because his contract will immediately be up. But you don't want to make that mistake in the fifth round because uh, that's a four-year contract you're giving a guy. And um, you want to make sure you nail that fifth rounder. Um, also, this process, by the way, I put it on a timer. I, I'm doing this by myself. It's kind of silly, but I just want to keep myself on some timer and I do a three hour uh, round. So what I do is, I do them on separate evenings. I uh, do a three hour, one night, a, one night of a week. Usually Tuesday through Friday, I get the four rounds done. And then Saturday is a big bang, uh, four rounds, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth, plus under after free agency to clean up the draft. Uh, it seems like a lot of time maybe, but if you get a good, effective draft, you're playing a solitary league, chances are, the more attention to detail in the process, you're going to end up playing some fun and exciting games and have a very competitive league. And that's what I've been striving to do here, putting this stuff up on YouTube. So let's go right into the fourth round. Um, by process elimination, I can look at the board and uh, identify exactly based on what was the first three rounds, who they took here in the fourth round. You also notice that each eight grouping of, by team abbreviation, the top four boxes are all filled because that's the top four picks. So in this first pick of the fourth round, the Ohio players selected 1973 Orlando Cepeda, and he was a full-time DH. Orlando Cepeda enjoyed that suitcase. He traveled a lot, around a lot. Actually went to the American League to become a designated hitter. Did very well with Boston in 73. 20 homer, 86 RBI, and a 289 average. So he is was part of the big Vita Blue trade with Oakland. Oakland had Cepeda last year. Previous to that, I think he was with Atlanta and Philadelphia. He's traveled all over baseball since San Francisco. So Orlando Cepeda. Second pick in this round. Oh, this is a great pick for a struggling Florida team. <laughs> they needed, they only had one spot left in their offense, and they needed to find somebody who could catch and play shortstop. <laughs> Go find that. Well, you know what they found? They found Chuck Goggin, who can catch and play shortstop, <laughs> is a switch hitter, hit 289, 350 on base. Did it with Atlanta. Everybody did it with Atlanta in 1973. My goodness, folks. How did the Atlanta Braves not win the World Series in 73 when you have all those guys in 40 home runs and their extra players are Dick Dietz and Frank Tepidino and Chuck Goggin and all these guys hitting 300 and whatnot. But anyway, Chuck Goggin fills a need cleverly for the Florida Marlins. All right. Uh, drafting third in this round, the Kansas City Royals, and they punched the ticket for Fred Patek. Uh, pretty much an even performance. He's 29 years old now. He's going to be a two. He's going to be an A stealer. Eventually, he becomes a double A stealer. However, this is a really good year for Fred in that he had 77 walks. So good for him. It's a shame he couldn't do that year in and year out. But he was very selective this year and had a only a 225 batting average, but his op uh, on base is 324. Almost exactly 100 points better. So, good gear for that card. Texas had the fourth pick, and they doubled up with two guys in 72. They announced Frank Howard. Uh, his He had moved to the Tigers by then, but they're going to keep him in Texas, Washington Center, Texas Ranger, all the way to the end. 
um, Frank Howard, and then also Bill Hands, another player they took. Uh, he was a Ranger uh, in that year, uh, age 32. Uh, 11 and 8, 189 innings for Mr. Bill Hands. All right, drafting fifth, it was Las Vegas. And we finally get a wavered player pickup. So Vegas, um, as per norm, the expansion teams don't necessarily have a very good talent pool um, in the years. Um, you know, they're only going to get leftovers from other organizations. So fortunately, they were able to go into the waiver pool and they found Fred Sherman. Uh, Detroit put him on waivers via Burlington or the Expos, and then Fred Sherman actually played in the World Series last year for those Tigers. Uh, he still can get lefties out, which is all we really need to do. So that filled a need for Vegas, getting Fred Sherman. Next up is Boston with a sixth pick, and they added their last keeper, Roger Moret, in the year of 73. Roger Moret, you know what? This guy knows how to win ball games and not lose them because... His winning percentage in 71, 73, and 75 is 13 and 2, 14 and 3, 14 and 5. Just an insanely high winning percentage. <clears throat> His career is cut short by injuries, but he had a really nice 73, 13 and 2, 317 ERA, and 156 innings. He's going to actually be in the bullpen as Blass, Wise, Billy, and Louis Tiant are in the rotation. Next up, drafting seventh, the Dodgers. And they fill the need in the year of 72 by taking not one, but two relievers. And they were both free agents that they acquired in the offseason and made them keepers. Frank Lindsay had some success with the Cardinals, with the Astros. 303 ERA in 77 innings. And they doubled up by also taking Barry Lursch, who had some nice years with the Phillies as a starter and a reliever. Here, he's got a 304 ERA in 100 innings. Both guys will join Jim Brewer and Charlie Huff in the Dodger bullpen. All right, the Big Red Machine finally ran out of Big Red Machine, guys. Shocker. Well, you know, you can't get everybody in your organization. So in 72, they needed to complete their bullpen, and they found Jack Aker. Jack Aker had some success with the Yankees, the Cubs. We had him on the White Sox for a minute. He was 6-6 six six with a 296 ERA in 67 innings. He joins Bourbon, then Denny Riddleberger as the lefty, and, of course, Clay Carroll in the red bullpen. The Seattle Mariners. They doubled up in 72. Boy, they're having a really good draft. They're drafting good players, and their fits in the in the uh, roster for the Mariners, I'm not making I'm not going to make any predict, predictions about this team making the playoffs, but 500 or better seems possible. They went with 72 Joe Pepitone, probably yeah that's going to be his last good year at age 31. He's still great defensively at first, 262 with eight homers and 214 at bats as a part time player now. Double that up with Steve Klein, just 24 years old out of the Yankee system. He went uh, on three days rest. I think he must have had arm problems too because he had an outstanding 71 and 72. Then we never heard from him again. But Steve Klein was 16 and 9, 240 ERA, 236 innings for the Yankees in 72. Colorado Rockies, uh, a beneficiary of the Commissioner Award pick, meaning that they already had locked up players from 72, 73, 74, and 75. So they can go anywhere in this draft in any remaining round. Uh, that's one of the bonuses. And they actually went to 72 to find a lefty reliever, Jim Strickland. Uh, Strickland was a twin. Um, uh, he had two. He, thank you, Stratomatic, for giving us Jim Strickland cards for two years when they only threw like 30 innings. Because the league certainly needs, sorely needs, left handed relief pitching. And so they created Jim Strickland cards. Here he's 3-1 and one with a 250 ERA, but the whip is pretty high. A lot of walks and homers. It's a 130 whip. That's not too bad. But it'll help the Colorado Rockies. They only have to get one more player. 
So they're on the quick end of completing the roster. Drafting 11th, Arizona Diamondbacks. Uh, they added Merv Rettman to their outfield. Merv is no longer that masher he was with Baltimore in their World Series years where he hit 318, 320. But Merv does, at age 30, great defensive outfielder, can run and throw. Um, 262 average, had a good batting eye, had a 378 OPS, uh, on base percentage, excuse me, 789 OPS. Good solid player. He's also a two in center field, though. They don't need him to play center. They have Dave May out there. Drafting 12th, the California Angels, and they made a nice little pick. Uh, and that's also the first, I believe, undrafted free agent from the 1972 box. We have not seen any of these players. And actually, this guy played in the Winter Baseball Classic, if you watched any of that. His name is Ricky Clark. His stats aren't very good. 4-9 with a 4.51 ERA. But when we played the card in the Winter Baseball Classic, we found out that he's a right-handed reliever who gets lefties out. And that can be very valuable when you only have an eight-man pitching staff. So I would probably not have known that had I not had the Winter Baseball Classic where I can take a look at some of these extra player guys that I have never heard of before. And frankly, Ricky Clark, I think is just a one-year wonder I don't think he does anymore I don't recall his name after this the Mets at 13 okay so this is a nice move it's not a great move it's a nice move they like Bob Apodica he is really good he had a really awesome 75 but they locked him out of that year because they took Wayne Garrett and Lee Lacey that's okay they took a 74 season not quite as good, so you're taking a lesser talented version of him. But the point is, next year you can upgrade Apodica to the better card. And moreover, he's yours. So nobody can steal him away from you. So uh, slightly better than average Apodica here has a 350 ERA. And he's got a whip of 130. And 75, if you upgrade to that, he'll have an ERA of 150. He'll lower his ERA by a couple of runs. All right, 14th, the Milwaukee Brewers. Oh, how about the Brewers finally having a nice round of this draft? Pretty mediocre selections to this point. They had to go into the year of 1974. We knew the Brewers had a lot of call-ups in 74 and 75, but a lot of them weren't ready. They were looking for a catcher to platoon with Daryl Porter, and a lefty reliever. They found both, and they found guys who are going to stick with the team. Charlie Moore is your platoon mate with Daryl Porter, a 245 hitting catcher, but he's loaded up against left handed pitching. And Kevin Cobell, very capable lefty, eventually gets traded to the Mets later in the decade, but as a lefty, uh, he's a relief starter. But, but if you use them strictly against lefties, he's very good. So sometimes starters, lefty starters, who get knocked around versus right-handed batters, uh, they get used uh, as a situational lefty. All right, with a 15th pick in this round, the Padres. Oh, this is interesting. They went for Jim Fergosi. I was wondering who was going to go for him. Fergosi uh, took a kind of a nosedive in 72, 73, uh, or 74. 73 though, he does hit 268. He's got a 446 slugging, 764 OPS. Can still play th through all the infield positions, so not very good defensively. But they give, it gives the Padres an option at shortstop, even though he's a 4048, you can still stick him out there to start a game and bring Enzo Hernandez in defensively to replace him. That's, this is the way you get the power of Fregosi and the speed of, and defense of Hernandez to finish the game. Plus, uh, Hernandez could start at shortstop against lefties, and then you could put Fregosi at third, first, DH. So the flexibility of Fregosi was pretty good here for the Padres as a wavered guy. Again, at least this color code here, W and the yellow, means he was put on waivers by the Brewers a year ago. Fregosi 
his odyssey from the Mets or from the Angels, Mets, Brewers. Yeah. Eventually becomes a manager of the California Angels later in the decade. All right, 16th. Oh, yeah, nice pick here. So, 72 was the year, and there was a guy on the waiver list who could pitch on three days rest. One guy, this guy, Bill Parsons, the only guy on the waiver list who can pitch on three days rest. And frankly, his ERA is a little high. He's 13 13, 391 ERA, 214 innings. You look a little closer, and the whip's not bad at all. It's a 122 whip. He's got a pretty nice card. He has trouble keeping the ball in the park, 27 homers, most by lefties. If he can keep the ball in the park in the Astrodome, he might have some success. Bill Parsons joining Larry Durker and Dave Roberts. Three guys can pitch on three days rest. Houston won this division a year ago. No, the Giants did. Houston missed out the wild card by a whisker. But Houston's major league trajectory is not very good. They would lose 100 games a couple times. But by the late 70s, that's when they reemerge and with the Sambitos and Cruises and guys like that, Terry Poole and so forth. Halfway through, now 17th, the, the Twins, this is a, another honorarium. Uh, they took 72 Killebrew last round. This round, they take Tony Oliva. And his numbers are pretty comparable to Orlando Cepeda's numbers that we had at the beginning of this round. Left-handed DH. And by the way, Tony Oliva, of course, hit lefties better than righties. He could just strap it in. Uh, 291 average, 16 homers. His speed and base running uh, are gone now, which is a shame. So, I mean, I, he missed he missed the whole 1972 season. So, And he comes back, doesn't play the outfield, and doesn't run the bases very well anymore. But, boy, he can still swing it. 291, 754 OPS for Tony Oliva. Next, Cleveland Indians. They had to go into the 74 box, and they had a few options. They had two options. They needed an outfielder, and they also needed a right-handed reliever. They declined Charlie Spikes, which is a shame. And they could still get him. They still have an option to possibly select Charlie Spikes with the other pick in 74. But the thing with the Spikes card is he's, he happens to hit righties much better than lefties. And looking at Spikes' career, he only really has two good years. And the rest of the time, it's not that great. So he might be omitted altogether, whereas the guy they selected is Tom Buskey. And Buskey will have a nice little career with Cleveland, later with Toronto. And here at age 27 and 74, late bloomer, He's got a 319 ERA in 93 innings. And he's got a 135 whip. Nice card for Tom Buskey in 74. All right, the St. Louis Cardinals. They are having a nice draft, folks. We talked about this in the earlier draft results videos. It started with Torrey and, um, excuse me, it started with Brock and Bob Forsh, then it went Simmons, Rabowski, then it went Torrey. Now they added Sonny Siebert and John Kennedy. And John Kennedy's a two at third base, which is great news because Torrey is a four at third base now and a three at first base. They still have Sizemore and Mike Tyson at second and short. And they added uh, Sonny Siebert as well they all have a five-man rotation. Bob Gibson can pitch on three days rest. Behind him, they got John Curtis, Scipio Spinks, um, Sonny Siebert, and Bob Forsh uh, as a swing man. He can be a relief starter. So like what the Cardinals are doing, uh, trying to compete in a very tough division with the Reds and Pirates. Drafting 20th. Oh, the Expos, they just keep punching You'd think the Expos were a perennial playoff team the way they, they draft the last few years. They have a lot of talent in Montreal. They always did. It's a question of keeping them, utilizing them, not letting them get signed away to other teams. The player they selected here is Bill Stoneman. 12-14, 298 ERA in 250 innings. They have added Bill Stoneman, 
298 and 250, Steve Ranko, 281 and 249, and Dave McNally, 358 ERA in 259 innings. You know who the other pitcher they have is? Steve Rogers, rookie card with a 154 ERA. So the Expos are going to have some of the best pitching in the American League, and they already added Gary Carter, Jerry White, and Ron Hunt. So, yeah, if you... <laughs> This sort of sport I invented, this carryover league, really portends well for the Expos franchise. Probably better than the traditional Expos franchise, which really had maybe a couple errors where they were really good and they just kept stubbing their toe. They were good, really good from 79 to 82. Then, of course, in the early, in the strike year of 94, they were really good. But, yeah, I really like enjoying drafting for the Expos. All right, Team 21, a uh, playoff team a year ago, the Portland team playing in the all-expansion team division, National League Mountain with Arizona, Colorado, Las Vegas. Portland won it a year ago. Uh, not a particularly good draft. They don't necessarily have access to some of the best players. It took Angel Mangual, who was only 25, um, he can hit left-handed pitching very well. He's only a 246 hitter, but, but he hits lefties very well. He'll platoon with Rich Coggins in center field. Uh, if you notice here, too, um, you know, I put little notes in here, like this note up here, just to let me know what to look for later in the draft. This note here uh, means left-handed relief pitcher, right-handed relief pitcher, infielder, and DH versus lefty. And this little abbreviation next to Portland means catcher and infielder, and then an infielder who can also play the outfield. <laughs> Good luck with that. That's that's the three. <laughs> that's the three things that Portland needs. All right, the Cubs. Oh, this is another really clever move for the Cubbies. Look out, sneaky Cubs team. I've been gushing on these guys. He started with Fergie Jenkins, 25 win Rangers card, and Andre Thornton to Tim Hosley, getting Beckert, Lloyd Allen. They needed a lefty starter. They didn't have anybody in the organization. So they looked in the 73 box, and Doug Rowell was sitting out there because the Dodgers have no room for him. Um, because the Dodgers have three lefties already, and they're going to have the same three lefties for a while. Claude Osteen, Tommy John, and Jim Brewer. So Doug Rowell is on the outside looking in, and the Cubs snatched him away. By the way, the Cubs also have Bert Hooten. So we know Rowell and Hooten will both eventually play for the Dodgers. So it seems like the trade for Buckner will eventually happen in the future. But the, uh, the Cubs should ask for more in return since they have two of uh, members of Dodger property there. Doug Rowell, 396 ERA in 63 innings. That's okay, though. He might be mediocre in this particular year, but he'll get better by 75, 76, 77. All right. We got the Yankees. Oh, yeah, this was a great move. This is a George Steinbrenner move. The Yankees, strangely, are the only team in this round to be having to take a guy from 1975. The 75 box has been the most talented box, but the Yankees have not used it because they took Bobby Mercer and Nettles in the first round. They took Mel Stottlemyre in the second round, and they took Sandy Alomar because they needed a, switch, a second baseman, and Alomar goes from the Angels to the Yankees, so he made sense. They were stuck with nobody in the 75 box uh, the guys assigned to them, Mike Thompson was a very good. There was a very good Ed Figueroa, but I'm going to scroll up. This was one of the smarter moves. The Florida Marlins took Ed Figueroa in the, in the second round. So that came back to bite the Yankees because we know Ed Figueroa helps the Yankees get a World Series ring or two. He's also on the Cy Young list between 75 and 78 somewhere. So... With that, they had to make a deal. And they this is the first time I've had a trade of tokens for a player. 
And it was the Padres who had a surplus of outfielders. And so they shipped Gene Locklear to the Yankees for two draft tokens. Think of it as cash considerations. So makes sense. The Yankees have the money. So they used two draft tokens, and the Padres needed two draft tokens. They liked it. And um, Gene Locklear in 75 uh, hit 321 in 263 plate appearances. Interesting story because he does go from the Padres to the Yankees in 1976. Then he goes to Japan and has an uh, outstanding career uh, overseas. So he's one of the, one of the first big impact uh, Major League Baseball players to have a big uh, career in Japan, Gene Locklear. So the Yankees got him, cost him a couple tokens. He'll immediately uh, replace Ron Blomborg as a left-handed hitting DH in Yankee Stadium. All right. Next up, Toronto. Uh, they needed a lefty reliever in '73, and there was a few, not particularly good ones. They found Eddie Bain. Minnesota twin, 21 years old. Now he's 0-5 with a 492 ERA, but before you worry about that, he does do pretty good against lefties. And that's all I ask out of my left-handed relievers. Can you get the lefties out reasonably? If the righties light you up, I'm not that overly concerned. I'll get you out of there. So 60 innings for Eddie Bain. 1.52 whip. He'll probably pitch better than those stats selectively versus lefties. I also made a note here. <laughs> Vegas has not yet to pull the trigger on Cleon Jones. And if you've been following the league, you, you might uh, know that the Blue Jays are a safe haven for former Met players <laughs> because they've had Tommy Ag come here. They've had Don Clendenon come here. This year, Ed Cranepool is here. So do they go after Cleon Jones? They might do that in the sixth round of the draft if he's still available. So I made a note for that. This also suggests in this note that they need a left-handed relief pitcher. And they also need two outfield platoons. So AG is available, Cleon Jones is available, and combine them with a couple left-handed hitting outfielders, and that's your two outfield platoons. Oh. The Giants. Now, if I was going to pick the draft winner, I mean, I like the Cubs, but I like the Giants better. The Giants are knocking this draft out of the park. After going old with Willie Mays and Juan Marichal, then they went to Bobby Bonds and Dick Dietz. Then they went young with Montefusco and Gary Lavelle. So, with only needing two guys... The only positions they need is a defensive catcher for Dick Dietz and a defensive first baseman for Willie McCovey, so McCovey can be the DH. They found Bob Robertson on the waiver wire by the Pirates. So the Pirates couldn't keep everybody from the World Series team, so they put Bob Robertson on waivers. So here's the numbers. He's a 2-E-14 defensive first baseman. was always good there. Batting average is not good. It's a 229 average. But a 320 on base, 479 slugging, and a 799 OPS with a 229 average is outstanding. He had 16 homers in 236 at bats, so that's a 30 homer season. Homers and walks. The Giants are going to lead the league in walks. That's everybody does it on this team. Willie Mays, Bonds, Bob Robertson, Dick Dietz, joining Gary Matthews. Chris Spire, Willie McCovey, all those guys walk a ton. So the Giants, they probably are the favorite in the West, even though the Dodgers, we're getting to the Dodgers era uh, where they go to the 74 series, and the Cincinnati Reds are in a different division. So at least in this league, the Giants and Dodgers are the big bad rivalry in the National League West. All right, the Chicago White Sox having the speediest draft. They've taken like 20 seconds over four rounds. They already have their name written down on a card for each round of the draft. They knew they were going to go Gossage, Wood, Melton, and in this round, Bart Johnson. 
carved in stone. They've been scouting this out all off season. So 74, Bart Johnson, 10 and four, 274 ERA, seems to have his control issues sorted out as he has a 1.12 whip. He now goes back into the rotation since they have Rich Gossage in the bullpen. The White Sox need one more right-handed relief pitcher and then a hitter. They, they could play with 11. I mean, the White Sox need nothing on their offense. They got 11 guys is all they need, but they have to draft a 12th guy. So find somebody. I said they need a right fielder versus lefties. So we'll see if that's what they choose. Otherwise, whoever you take is going to sit on the bench. All right, Oakland. Oh, this was a clever move. So they needed a player from 74. It was slim pickings. They didn't like what they saw. But they had Dave Hamilton, who was frankly pretty mediocre. And 74 Dave Hamilton does something very important. That's get lefties out. He's got a 315 ERA, a 129 whip. But he's very good at getting lefties out in this particular year. Something that Paul Lindblad would do. But guess what? They can't get Paul Lindblad. A lot of Oakland players. You might think that I'm anti-Oakland A's or I've got it I'm trying to deny the Oakland dynasty. But the reality is Oakland could probably win five or six World Series. I mean, if you just let it load this machine up because they cherry pick all their stars. So if they don't get access to a Bill North, or a Paul Lindblad, or a Dave Duncan, or Ray Fossey, you know, guys like that. It's not a big deal because all the other Oakland stars are cherry-picked for their best years, and that's why Oakland is probably the favorite in the America League to go to the World Series year in and year out. This draft, whew, Downing, Wilson, Bob Locker, righty gets lefties out. Jim Todd, a righty gets righties out. They got the perfect bullpen, uh, Dave Hamilton and Raleigh Finger. So they have the, all the lefty-righty matchups perfectly. Dick Green's a two, his uh, 267 average. Now Claudel Washington can hit 300. Now he can steal bases in center field. He's having a fantastic draft. The, the rich get richer, even though we know other teams have poached their players. All right, Atlanta. Very unsexy pick here, <laughs> frankly. And Atlanta is a very weird drafting team, and they've only wanted to go one one at a time, which is fine. Meaning that they just they want to see what's out there. They think there are diamonds in the rough, and so they don't want to lock in a guy when they feel there's a better guy out there by not locking in a guy. So they took Mike McQueen, who has been with them. He was 19 years old in 70 when they made his first strat amount of card. And as a lefty reliever, he's at least decent getting lefties out. And that's all they really need. Atlanta doesn't prioritize pitching because they could just simply destroy the wall. They have Hank Aaron, Ralph Gar, Dusty Baker, uh, you know, Darrell Evans, Davey Johnson. Got everybody hits like three something, guards three fifty three, everybody hits forty home runs. It's a ridiculous offense in Atlanta. And they had Buzz Capra and Tom House at the height of their powers. So, yeah. All right, next up, drafting 29th, the Phillies. Oh, they complete the 73 year by selecting Tim McCarver. They already have Bob Boone. So McCarver and Boone will platoon lefty, righty, keep behind the plate. McCarver's got a plus two arm. Not really crazy about that, but Boone usually has a good defensive arm. McCarver's got a good stick, though. 266, 339, 704 OPS. He's 31 years old. Could even play first base for five minutes. Uh, so Tim McCarver is your Philly selection. Baltimore. Okay. Uh, they had to actually go under at the free agent in the year of 73. And they found this monster card of Dick Sharon as a... They were looking for a good corner defensive outfielder who could hit lefties and that's exactly what Sharon does. He's a two in the outfield but he mashes homers versus lefties. 
The Orioles are getting their swagger back. Um, the pitching's always been there. Their offense has always been kind of meh. But now they've loaded up with offense in this draft. Brooks Robinson in 288. Lee May with 29 home runs. Earl Williams with 28 home runs. Sharon will platoon with Al Bunbury, who's hitting 337. They went out and got Kenny Singleton with a great Montreal card. They have Paul Blair in center. So Baltimore is hoping that retooling the offense this offseason will get them back to the World Series. And let's get to the World Series teams, beginning with Detroit. Uh, they needed a lefty reliever in the year of 73. This is the third team to go this route. Let's scroll back up because I think the Cubs are the first. Yeah, the Cubs went Doug Rao. By the way, in this box here, uh, for that particular group of pitchers, I ranked them. And so the, uh, Doug Rao was lefty number one in that free agent pool. Eddie Bain was lefty number four. Uh, Toronto just preferred him over two and three, who I don't really know who that is. And Veal is number six. So there's still two, I think Rich Trosden is one of those guys. And he'll probably be the next guy taken. I think he was L2, and I don't know who L3 was. But Bob Veal, longtime pirate, missed some time, came back with the Red Sox in 73, out of the bullpen. Uh, 36 innings, 347 ERA. Veal, as a lefty, will replace Fred Sherman, uh, joining John Hiller from the left side of the Tiger bullpen. And finally, the Pirates. Oh, the Pirates. The world champs. Uh, they put a big dent in everybody's dreams. Uh, yeah, because they're thinking, now we want to repeat. So, yeah, they had a monster selection couple guys here. They were like the Yankees. They hadn't picked the, picked the guy from 75 yet. And this, unlike the Yankees, they had the guys just sitting there and oh boy, folks, they upgraded Manny Sanguian, made him a 328 hitting catcher, 391 on base, 451 slug, and 842 OPS for Manny Sanguian with a minus two arm. And then Rennie Stennett. He was a 4E41 second baseman, no more. He's a 2E20, 286 batting average. By the way, the Pirates have finally fit all the pieces together. Al Oliver was in center field last year. He's moving to first base with Bob Robertson gone. Dave Parker can play center field as a rookie with a 73 card. He's moving into center field to get playing time. Richie Zisk or Stargell will play left field. The other will be the DH. Finally, all those Pirate outfielders can get in the lineup at the same time. And why? Is there a log jam? Well, because Roberto Clemente can play in the Carryover League with a 72 card through this season, 72, 73, 74, 75. That's why you have the Carryover Leagues, to see these players um, even after their year is over. So that's it. Four rounds of the draft are complete. I think uh, I'll just, the next... Uh, I won't do just, it's a little time consuming to do five, six, seven, and eight in one video. So I'll just finish the f next four rounds and come back with who I think is the best pick each team makes between the fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth round of the draft. So we'll look for that uh, when we do this again tomorrow. All right, thanks for checking out the fourth round of the 72-75 Carryover League Draft. We'll see you next time.